Do you have your seven blocks complete? Then it's time to move on. Hi everyone, Kristen Som here, and I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving with family and friends. So I had a great trip and now I am ready to get back to our nativity bench pillow. We have seven blocks, all seven blocks complete. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. Don't you just love it? So let me start by saying, please hit the like button if you are enjoying our tutorials. It helps the channel somehow, something with the YouTube algorithms. If you can just hit that like button, comment if you wish, make sure to subscribe so that you are receiving notifications notifications. I think you have to hit the bell to receive notifications. And what it does on my phone uh, when I like and subscribe to a page and hit that bell is I get a little notification. Oh, Christian Creates has uploaded a new video so that you're getting those notifications and you don't have to send me messages saying, when is the next video? You'll get notifications of that. So again, please help the channel by just hitting that like button. So we are going to move on today. Since we have our seven blocks complete, that means it's time to work on our inner borders. But before we can do our inner borders, we have to do that sand, that glittery sand at the bottom. So I wanna point out, if you did not get the embellishment kit, there is information on page 24 of the PDF and it says that uh, there is, for those that didn't get the embellishment kit, if you chose not to, purchase the embellishment kit, then you can get a, there's a pre-cut drifting sand glitter shape included in the embellishment kit. Wait a minute. That doesn't make sense to cut your own. Here it is. Sorry to cut your own. See the drifting sand pattern. That's on page 35 of the PDF so that you can choose to cut your own. You could use felt. You could use a big piece of glitter vinyl, whatever works for you. If you didn't get the embellishment kit, if you got the embellishment kit, then grab that now because we are going to use it. And you can see it is this little roll of the glitter vinyl and it comes to the size that we need. And it's just this little thing here. So don't forget, just like I mentioned, whenever we use our glitter vinyl, you need to make sure to take that topping off. Just like on the, just like all the others, this one is also going to have that little piece of, um, that, the vinyl covering the cover on the vinyl so we want to make sure to take that off all right before we put down our glitter vinyl on our pillow so what we're going to do don't forget take that off first but what we're going to do is we're just going to line this up on our um pillow on our blocks on our seven blocks along the bottom and it you can direct it however you want it to be. So some people were saying that, uh, which one was it? I think it was on block two. The, the shepherd is a little bit taller or a little bit higher up than the other. See how it's up just a tiny bit. So you can make your glitter sand go up that part. If you, if that bothers you either way, whatever works for you, but we're just going to line up that glitter vinyl along the bottom. It doesn't have to be right along the bottom because the excess is going to be sewn into the, so the seam allowance when we sew on our inner border. So don't worry about it being perfect. Just line it up the way that you want it to show on your pillow. Pillow. That's the first step. And then we're going to work on our inner borders after we have that on. By the way, we're going to top stitch this. I should mention that. We're going to put this on and then we're going to top stitch it. All right. So I'll show all that part in photos. But then after we do that, we are going to work on our inner borders. So let's talk about the inner borders real quick. So the inner borders is just this tan fabric. All right. I did back mine with feasible stabilizer because we are going to quilt it. Um, but that's optional, totally up to you. So it's a just a very simple light tan, almost like a light camel color um, of the um, silky solid, no design on it. We are gonna quilt this. So I wanna point out, I'm gonna bring you over to the computer to give you a visual of the options, all right? There are options. So on this, let me tell you the sizing. For the inner borders, uh, let's see. I think I have to go back to the cutting guide that we had in the beginning. So let's see, inner border. So we are going to cut 
two strips that are two inches times width of fabric, two inches times width of fabric. All right. And you know, it's interesting. That's if we're doing block by block. So actually I want to point out. So remember when I mentioned in the prep video that there's two columns on that fabric sheet that is on page four, there's the column. If you're doing traditional quilting, which I X'd out, and then there's the column that for those that are doing the block by block, and that makes it so that it's a little bit bigger, but you, it's up to you if you choose to do that on your inner border. I didn't because I don't want to have to recut it again, but I stabilized mine. If you don't stabilize yours, you may choose to have it be two inches and then cut it down because at the end, we're going to want it to be one and a half inches wide, not two inches wide. So depending on which column you followed, all right? So on everything, I followed the outer column except on the inner border. See how I have that circled? I, cu I cut mine to one and a half so that I won't have to recut it later, all right? So we will want the final size to be one and a half inches times the length of your project. So measure your project so that you know, first quilt it, quilt it all, make sure that you've got enough. And then at assembly, we will cut it down. All right. And it will be one and a half inches wide toward the, um, times the length of your project. So I already measured mine. If I recall, it was 37 inches and I cut mine. So I want to point out, or I sewed mine so that the blocks that are next to these ones that have all the the quilting that goes into the seam it i don't know what the overall size is supposed to be but mine measured 37 inches exactly all right so with the quilting um when we do the inner borders it's going to be 36 36 and a half inches um, length because we'll have that quarter inch seam on each side. All right. So mine is 37 inches. So I want 37 inches of quilting and that's why you need to measure yours so that you know how much quilting that you want on yours. All right. So I want 37 inches of quilting. And like I said, I'm going to bring you over to the computer to show you the quilting because there are options. So let me turn back to that page real quick. So, um, the, the, let's see, glitter vinyl information is on page 27. I believe, and the inner borders are on page 24. So let me pull that up real quick here. So on 24, it tells about the, yep, 24, it tells about the inner borders. So there's options, like I said. So there is a one by seven, a one by 10, a one by 12, and a one by 14. And the reason I point this out is they're all a little different. And since it's wording, you're going to want to do it in a way that works for you. So I want it mine to say, um, joy to the world, the, the, um, the king, what is it? Joy to the world. The king has come. The Lord has come. That's it. The Lord has come. Sorry. Um, but on this, it says the Lord has come. I always knew it as, um, the Lord has come, but maybe I've always sung it wrong. <laughs> all these years. So joy to the world, the Lord has come. And so the 14 inch, if you have, depending on your hoop size, of course, if you have a hoop size that will do all of that, I'm going to do that one, the joy to the world, the Lord is come. And then the one by 12 is let earth receive her King. So I want that too. So I want joy to the world. And then I want, um, the, the Lord has come and then let earth receive her King. So I'm going to do a one by 14 and a one by 12. And I'll show you why, um, but then there's also a one by 10 and a one by seven, and those have wording, um, just smaller, of course. And so you would want to hoop them in a way that you're getting all of the words that you want. Totally up to you, of course, but I'm going to show you, I'm going to give you a visual and I've already figured out what will work for me and I'll share that. Um, so again, it will depend on your hoop size. It will depend on what wording that you want and where it is and how much quilting overall. I want mine to have the full quilting throughout the entire pillow, um, the bottom, obviously the bottom and the top, the inner borders. Um, so I'm going to do that. One other thing I forgot to mention is when you are um, putting that glitter vinyl, and I'll mention this also in photos, but when you're doing that, we want, just like we've always done on our glitter vinyl, we want to like seal it, to heat it to whatever you call it, to be able to get it to um, adhere. And so we are going to use an iron, but always make sure that you are using a pressing cloth. I use a pillowcase. Make sure to do that whenever there is any vinyl involved. All right, so just a reminder on that. Um, you don't want the iron directly to touch your mylar glitter stars, your vinyl, any of that, you don't want it to touch directly. All right, 
So for now, we're just going to work on that glitter vinyl, the sand, and we're going to work on our inner borders. All right, the two, two sets, one at the top and one at the bottom. That's what we're going to do today. I'm going to bring you over to the computer and just give you a visual of those so you can start thinking about how you want to do yours. And I forgot to mention batting. I haven't cut my batting yet, but for the inner borders, of course we want batting because we are gonna quilt them. So make sure you've got your batting. So the way to figure out the batting, so if we want our design to be, it's one and a half for the um, fabric, that means that we want the batting to be one inch. So we want one inch wide times the length of your project. So like I said, my project is 37 inches, so I know that I want batting that is 36 and a half inches because I'll have that quarter inch seam on each side. So so for mine, it's going to be one inch of batting times 36 inches. And you can, it doesn't have to be one long strip. Of course, you can do it in um, bits and then uh, glue it, glue stick it together. So like I said, I like to use glue stick. I have been using glue stick very well to add my batting on for my inner and outer borders. I think that that works really well. Um, some people use the fabric spray. If you have that, you can absolutely use that. I'm personally not a fan of the fabric spray. I don't like that it gets everywhere and it's messy and it doesn't work for me. I don't like it. So I use the glue sticks. If you haven't tried them, I highly recommend it. I will add a link here of where you can get them on Amazon. It's the nice big ones so that they last a long time. Um, but, and it comes in like a pack of three I believe so from Amazon they come super quick and um, I highly recommend it it's the the purple disappearing glue stick so you can see where you've put it on and it dries quickly so you want to do it in bits and then fold it back over to the project um, and just continue adding it on so I will show that in photos as I get doing that but that works really well for me so don't forget your batting <laughs> Hey everyone, so I'm at my computer now and hopefully my microphone is working better than it was last time. I don't know why it went bad, but I did um, check it and it worked fine on the test. So hopefully, fingers crossed, it works well. Um, so I'm at my computer and I just want to show you, give you a quick visual of the different options on the inner borders. So I'm going to open up in Brilliance Essentials. That is the embroidery software that I highly recommend. I think it works so great. And if you haven't purchased in Brilliance Essentials, I highly suggest it. I, I will show you how to use it in almost every tutorial I show um, how to do various things. So I'll walk you through the whole process. If you do decide to purchase it, please use my affiliate link um, to purchase it. Just click on that link up above and click on in Brilliance Essentials. That's the embroidery software that I use. All right, so I'm going to go to File, New Page to get a blank slate here. And I'm on my nine by 14 hoop, which actually I'm going to use that just to show you um, your options so you can see them all. So if you're not on the hoop size you want, go up to this preferences folder, click on that, click on the hoop size that you want and say, okay. And then go up to this compass button and click on H for hoop so that it zooms into the, to the hoop. All right, so I'm just gonna show you the different ones here. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and join two together because we have to do an inner border on the top and on the bottom. So we do need two in, um, and I'm gonna do them in one hooping. So I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna join them together and give you some information. So I'm gonna start by going to Merge Stitch File, and it's asking, where is this file that you want me to open? So I'm on my desktop. That's where I have my file. Um, Nativity Bench Pillow with Caliquilt, our, our wonderful sponsor. They have done such a great job throughout this project. So let's see, I'm going to open up the quilting bundle. Don't forget, if you haven't bought the quilting bundle yet, please use our sponsor's affiliate link. There's a link underneath this video. Um, and then there's stars four, stars five. We want the border. So border Christmas six. And then the embroidery files and Pez is what I use for my machine. And again, I'm just going to show you these real quick here. So here's the one by 10. That's the first one that comes up. I'm going to double click on that. It goes to the center and see it says joy to the world. All right, joy to the world. This is on the one by 10. If I click on that, it shows that it is, let's see, did I click on the right one? One by 10 and it is seven and 13 16 size. That is the size of the one by 10 design. Okay, so it could obviously be longer, but since it's wording, it would be kind of weird if it said joy to the world and then started in on joy again, and yet some of us are going to link them together. So that's why it's only 7 and 13 16 length. So you'll need that information to, to decide what you want um, to fit. So I'm going to go ahead and just move this over here for now, and I'm going to go to uh, Merge Stitch File, 
and I'm going to click on that again. And the first, the next one that comes up is a one by 12 border Christmas six. Double click on that. And now this one says, let earth receive her king. All right. Let earth receive her king. And this one is 11 and three quarters inches long. This is the one by 12 design. You can see it right here. One by 12 and it's 11 and three fourths length. All right. Again, I'm just going to move that over to the side. I'm going to go to merge stitch file open up those designs again and the next one is the one by 14 double click on that goes to the center i'm just going to click on the design and move it over a little bit all right this one says joy to the world the lord is come all right joy to the world the lord is come all right so that's why i was saying well let me show you one more all right so merge stitch file and this is going to be the one by seven let's see right there one by seven so those are our four options it goes to the center i'm just going to click on it and move it over so we can see all of them this one says the lord has come so if you are using a five by seven hoop and that is your largest hoop let's see was this one was the one by ten so you wouldn't be able to do that you would just do this lord has come um or let me think this is uh, this was seven and three quarters so it's too big for a five by seven hoop if you have a six by ten hoop you could do joy to the world and then the lord is come you could do both of those whatever works for you figure out what works for you for your hoop size and the wording that you want so you can see them all at a glance here so i know that personally i would like to have joy to the world the lord is come this is the one by 14 and then i'd also like this one by 12 that is um let earth receive her king hard to see sideways let earth receive her king so i would like a combination of these two that's what i'm going to do and so here's what i'm going to do i'm going to do file new page get a, a clean slate and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on this 1x14 design. I just clicked on the design, or you can go over here and click on it, whatever works. I'm going to say Control-C just to get it into a new tab and say Control-V. All right, so there is one of them. Now, I need my 14-inch hoop because the design is 14 inches long. But I want two of these because I want to work on two and one hooping um, so that I can get both of these designs so I need one for the top and one for the bottom and let me think if I do you know what I'm thinking actually no I can only do two yeah so eventually so what I figured out and I left my paperwork over there oh there it is nice hold on <laughs> all right so what I'm thinking is if I did let me go back to this one so you can see them all and click it so you can see them all if I did a 1 by 14 and then a 1 by 12 so this one joy to the world the Lord has come and then to let earth receive her king if I do both of those so the 1 by 14 and then the 1 by 12 and then I do another 1 by 14 because if I only do the two I only have 26 inches a little less than 26 inches of quilting and my pillow is 37 inches I want 36 and a half inches of quilting so that me means I need another one. So if I were to do 26, this one was too short. So I'm going to do another 14. All right. So I'm going to do joy to the world. The Lord is come. Then let earth receive her king. And then I'm going to do another joy to the world. The mm -hmm. Lord is come. So I would do one by 14, then one by 12, then one by 14. And if I do all three of those in three hoopings, it would total to 39.75 inches of quilting and of course as long as my batting isn't there it's just going to cut off some of the words at the end because it's going to repeat anyway so that works really well for me that's what i'm going to do so again figure out what works for you what wording you want what size hoop that you have will work for you and figure out how much quilting that you need all right so like i said mine is 37 inches so the 39.75 will work great. Right? It will be three hoopings, but really it would be six if I don't do two in one hooping. So I'm going to do that. So that's why I opened up this new tab. So I have joy to the world. The Lord has come. I'm going to click on this design to show you how to get it ready for a color sort. All right. So I'm going to click on, let's see if we do. So here's a good point. If we are adding the batting onto the borders like I'm going to show you how to do you don't need steps one and two you can go ahead and click from over here drag over get step one and step two and you can hit delete 
because you are not going to need those if you're adding the batting. This is the placement stitch for the batting and the tack down stitch of the batting. If you're adding the batting onto the fabric strip, strip like I'm going to show you, you don't need those two. I'm going to leave them in just so that I remember to tell everybody to bypass them for those that aren't using software. I'm going to leave it in to, to bypass it. But for you, you can delete them and then you don't have to change any of these colors. So the reason we change the color, see this default one blue? There's two of those and those will join together if we don't change the color on one of them. Um, and, and that would make it so that the placement of the batting and placement of the main fabric are together joined. So I don't want that. I want each step. But again, you don't need step one and two. So I'm just going to click on one, one, click on the color, and I'm just going to change this one color. I'm going to change it to the first color that comes up for me so that it does not join the rest. And the rest are fine. I don't need to worry about that. All right, now I'm going to click on that design that I already changed that one color or deleted the first two steps. And I'm going to say control C to copy and then control V like victory to paste. So now there's two. You can see over here in the objects window that there are two, but over here it looks like there's only one because it goes right on top of that first one. So I'm just gonna use my arrow key to move it over. All right, and it doesn't matter because we really don't need any extra room, but I want my 14 inch hoop so that I can get that 14 inch design. So I've got a lot of extra space in here. All right, so. I'm just going to leave that there. That works. All right. So that is that one is done for that part, but we do still want to do a color sort. So I'm going to go ahead and right now I've got 10 color steps. I can reduce that by quite a bit. So I'm going to go to utility color sort. And don't forget, you want these unchecked and you want tolerance at zero. You want to have the same settings that I have to be able to get the same results that I'm getting. And you can see it has reduced the design by five color changes. Again, if you only had three, um, I have all five color steps. If you only had three, it would be a little bit different. It would be six instead, or I guess you would have six steps, three steps. You would have three steps. Sorry for the confusion. Um, so I'm going to have five now total. So I'm going to click new view. Always click new view just in case something didn't work the way that you thought it should. It will open a new tab and see if I go to that previous tab, there's the two designs with 10 color steps. If I go to the new tab that it cre created, then I have one step and there's only five steps there, one design and five steps. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that and make sure it did what I wanted it to do. There's the placement of our batting that is together. Again, you don't need that. And the tack down of the batting. You don't need either of those two if you're adding the batting onto the strip. Um, so then there's the placement for the, the main fabric for the, the border strips. We definitely want that. It helps us to be able to line it up correctly. And then there is the tack down of the strips to hold it in place while it does the quilting. And then there is our quilting design. So that one is perfect. That's great. I'm, I have five color steps. That's perfect. I'm going to say file, save, stitch, file as. When you say as, it's not doing it over the original one. It is going to create its own. So I'm going to go back to my desktop to Nativity Bench Pillow. And let's see. Here's the quilting bundle right there. I'm going to go to Border Christmas 6, Embroidery Files, Pez. And I'm just going to name this, uh, let's see, one by 14 um, inner border times two. All right, so I have two and one hooping, save. Name it whatever you want that will help you to remember the design that you created. All right, and now I'm gonna go to file new, pay oh wait, first I'm gonna send it to my machine. Utility send to Solaris. If you don't have um, a Solaris or XP or one of the machines that is Wi-Fi ready, then you would just save it to your, to your USB stick and send it over to your machine, all right? So I just sent it wirelessly. All right, now I'm going to go to File, New Page, and I'm going to go back to that one that I had where I showed you the different options. And I'm going to click on the 1 by 12 design, and I'm going to say Control-C to copy it. You can do it that way, or you can just go to this Merge Stitch file and bring it in, in again. Either way works fine. Or you can even open the folder and drag it over to the, to the workspace, whatever works. All right, so there is our 1 by 12 design. Because I'm going to do that 1 by 14, then I'm going to do the 1 by 12, and then I'm going to do the 1 by 14 again. So again, I just want to change that first color. Same reasoning as before. You can click on 1 and 2 and delete those. I'm just going to change the color so that I can remember to tell everyone to bypass it. All right, and that one's done. I'm going to just move it over a little bit. 
All right, and I'm going to say control C now that the colors are ready and control V and then it has put it on top of that first one. I'm going to use my arrow keys to move it over. Just give myself a little room. It really doesn't need much room um, because there's not much extra fabric. But anyway, um, so actually this one is I can use my 8x12 hoop. I'm going to change my hoop size just to save on stabilizer this one. I'm on my 9 by 14 hoop right now, but the design is um, 11 and 3 quarters inch long. So I should be able to fit in it, it in an 8 by 12 or actually even a 7 by 12. But let's just check and make sure. So I'm going to click on the preferences folder, click on my 7 by 12 hoop. And it, see how it turned red? That's just because I moved them so far over. So I'm just going to move them back, but I think it should fit. We'll see. 11 and 13 16 It'll be really close. Let's see though. So I'm going to click on the design. I'm going to move it off so you can see it's over the hoop size. That's why it's mad with me with the red. All right, but it still is awfully close. So I'm going to move it up a bit. That should give it a little bit more room. Let's just see. And then this one also, I'm just going to move it over. And I'm going to move it up. And let's see if that red goes away. And the red has gone away, so now it fits. So the design itself is six and a half, a little over six and a half by 11 and three quarters. And the hoop is 11 and 13 16. So it's really tight as far as the length, but it fits. And that will help me save a little bit of stabilizer. All right, so again, I want to do my color sort because I right now have 10 color steps and I only need five, three if you're doing, uh, if you're taking out steps one and two. All right, so I am going to go to Utility Color Sort. And again, make sure you've got the same settings that I have. And I'm going to click New View to check and make sure it did what I want it to do. There's our placement of the batting, which you don't need, and our tack down of our batting, which you don't need if you're adding the batting onto the strips. And then placement of the main fabric strips, the tack down of the strips, and the quilting design. So that's perfect, perfect. All right, I'm going to do File, Save, Stitch, File, As, and I'm going to name this one 1 by 12 Inner Borders, Inner Border times 2. All right, save, and then I'm going to send it to my machine or send it to your USB stick if you're doing that way, either way. All right, so that's ready. I'm going to go ahead and get started on my Inner Borders. Hey everyone, super quick. I just wanted to tell you I finished the sewing the glitter onto the bottom of the blocks and it was really, really easy to do. Don't be afraid of it. There's a little wave to that, the glitter strip. Um, and, and I just moved it to where I needed it because remember that one um, shepherd was a little bit high so I just moved my glitter strip to uh, to where I wanted it and top stitched it down. I used the sand color of um, thread and it was really 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 easy to do. Don't worry at all. Don't forget to take that plastic topping off um, and we are going to iron it down but it's it was easy. Great job. <laughs>
And my shirt today, this is a new one. It's just a plain white shirt on an Amazon hoodie that I really like the, the, these Amazon hoodies. But look at how cute the nativity scene. I thought you'd really enjoy that. Isn't that so fun? So a thrill of hope, the world... The Weary World Rejoices. Isn't that so cute? So I found this on an Etsy shop and the very next day it was gone. It was like sold out. So this Etsy shop is a little bit weird. I'm not super sure that I would recommend it. Um, it seems that they change their stock of what they allow each day and their things that maybe they shouldn't be selling. Like I saw Grinch items the next day and I know Grinch is like super copyright. So I'm not, I'm not going to recommend it, but you could do a, a search for a nativity manger scene, something like that. I've bought a few different designs that I've been trying to wear throughout this project. So the shirt itself is from Amazon. I will add a link here for the shirt from Amazon. It's a hoodie. It's a, a great um, shirt to embroider on. I've got this in several different colors. It does run a little bit small. I wear this in a bigger size than usual, so I recommend getting a little bit bigger than what you might think that you normally wear, but it's a great shirt for embroidering on. And how are you doing with your goal? We're almost near the end of this project. I want to hear about your goal. Um, my goal throughout this project has been to get out, do things, get outside, um, talk with people, see people, just go places basically. Because I tend to, when I'm going through a difficult time, I tend to isolate and um, just put my head down and work, work, work and, and stay in my own stuff. And so I'm, I've been working really hard throughout this project to not do that and Every day I've gone out and done something. I've, I've been pretty proud of myself for that. So this one, actually, my husband convinced me to go to California to go see my grandkids for Thanksgiving. And, you know, I love seeing my grandkids and we'll jump every time that there's an opportunity to do that. But I just went a few weeks ago and I got really, really sick. Remember, I lost my voice and oh my gosh, I, I was so so sick. I felt really well, but I had no voice whatsoever. And if I tried to talk, I'd get these coughing fits and it was pretty awful. I had no voice for three days, like not even a, a peep out of me. So, so I was a little bit paranoid of going back there. And cause I seem to get sick whenever I'm around because there's six kids in that one family. So there's a lot of people and a lot of um, illness that goes through all of them. So I was not going to go. I wasn't healed yet. I wasn't ready to, to put my body in for that again, but my husband convinced me to go and it was so much fun. So it's a full day driving there, nine hours from Idaho to California. And, um, then two days of wonderful love, love, love and playing games and eating good food and just so much wonderfulness. Oh my gosh. I, I feel so extremely blessed. And then another nine hour full day drive back. So two days of driving for two days of being there. But you know what? It was just what I needed, exactly what I needed. And I'm so glad that it worked out and so glad that I went. So had an absolutely wonderful time. I hope you also had a wonderful Thanksgiving with people that love you. That is just, it's exactly what we need, right? The, the best medicine ever. So um, I had a great time. I'm still working my goal. I actually haven't gotten out at all today. I've been working since we just got back and I'm trying to get caught up. But I need to make sure and do that. So <laughs> I'll have to make an effort. Um, but anyway, what are you doing for your goal? I want to hear about it. Did you hear that Do is working so hard on her first goal? She, she's committed to working a goal with our group. And so she is cleaning out all of her cupboards. And that is a huge job and so freeing and so wonderful to be able to do that. And it makes it so that you want to be in that room. You want to enjoy that room, especially if it's a craft room or a kitchen or whatever. It gets you back into enjoying your stuff when you can actually find it and you know where things are. And so, so many people are working on really cool projects. I love hearing about whatever your goal is. So share in the comments.